Today I'm taking a look at an old Maytag dryer and not just an old Maytag dryer but my old Maytag dryer. It is uh, the time switch, something in the mechanism has stopped working and there are no available replacement parts for it, no cross references, things like that. Uh, if I wanted to somehow repair it I'd have to do all that sort of legwork myself, figure out what fits what. Uh, it could just be the timer motor itself but in any event, I don't. Uh, I need a dryer, really. Um, I don't have time to. It's it's not a project. As a, there's a community of people that kind of rebuilds these for for fun, like you know, collector cars or whatever. But I don't have time to get into that uh, inner circle of of people or whatever. So um, uh, I've come up with a temporary solution to get this dryer working for now, and I'm probably gonna go ahead and budget for a newer one anyways, but uh, this one has lasted for a long time. It's been uh, originally belonged to my grandma, I believe, so um, and for those who are interested, uh, model number there, maybe you can see it. So electric dryer, if that wasn't obvious by now. The DE306 Maytag from the presumably late 60s or 70s or something like that, I don't know. Anyways, so uh, I have already temporarily installed a contactor in here to run it. In the meantime, it just operates off the door switch right now and I set a timer so I don't burn my clothes or burn out the dryer element or something like that. So. Uh, not wishing to do that forever. Uh, I got a, one of these little basic, I'd uh, use it for like, I don't know, a bathroom or some other location where you turn want to turn it on and then have it turn off after, uh, automatic, turn off automatically after a certain amount of time. So a uh, nice, easy, simple solution for that. Probably won't ever hit, use a 60 minute range, probably use a 30 minute range mostly. Um, it would again ideally in a perfect world I would get like a time delay relay and have it do the proper cool down cycle you know have have the contactor take out the heating element and then have it run for 15 minutes or whatever with just the the dryer fan but uh, again not gonna go through that at the moment this is just a temporary thing to get it going and uh, yeah so this is what I've done thus, thus far I just poked all the wires out here um, no need to make any connections inside the box. It can all just happen out here. Um, ground connection, neutral to power the timer, and then uh, this is the incoming 120 volts, and then this will be the outgoing to the, in this case, to the coil of the contactor. Obviously, you can't run everything through this. This is only 15 amp rated or so, um, and certainly it may pull only around that during. Uh, like once it gets up and operating, but the the peaks are, are higher than that for sure when it kicks on and stuff. So I think if you you might get away with it, but it would it would run uh, it would it'd probably burn out that timer pretty readily. So yeah, this is what I'm doing for now. Um, I have so I'm just gonna mount this to the the back cover here. It's kind of nice and sturdy. You know, it's got good old old fashioned like stamp sheet metal. So um, I got a little backup washer here too. This is just a something that was in my uh, electrical scrap bin. It's a reducer washer that someone custom cut to fit in a corner of an electrical panel somewhere. So um, I'm going to use it just as to beef up this this connection here at the bottom of the box. So I'll move over here. The garage is still in mid transition right now. I'm still moving into this place. So um, got my knockout punch kit here. Got the hole drilled about where I want it. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to get that set up. Draw stud and other pieces over here. Yeah, that'll be the next step. Okay, so I've got the box mounted up. I'm ready to start figuring out the wiring. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, the neutral here was originally tagged onto the switch um, uh, for the timer motor up here, so that I just moved over to one side of the contactor. And so uh, on the other prong, I'll be hooking up the, the neutral to power this timer. And then the 120 volts, I'll be tapping on at the same leg that we that we're switching for the heating element and drum motor here. So that'll just be uh, commoned onto the power there as well. And then we'll have uh, uh, the load side, this red wire, go over to the 
uh, to the contactor coil. At the moment, I have it wired to just be running off the door switch. So, the, uh, yeah, 120 volts just running directly to there. And uh, we'll still have the door switch in the loop, but it just won't be the, <laughs> the only thing controlling it anymore. So we'll have this time in there. So it's pretty straightforward. Um, no trouble at all, really. Um, on this this time switch is just taking one leg of the 120 and uh, switching it to these two these two wires for the heating element and the and the uh, drum motor. <laughs> there we go. That's the word. Okay, there it is. All done. Looks like I have a outlet on my washer, but it is in fact now a control panel. Just rotate through these to select the time. Or turn it off. Easy. Like I said, it might be nice to have a, uh, what would you call it? A delay on break timer that would run the dryer bin for you know 10 or 15 minutes afterwards get that get that cool down function that the the timer switch would have provided there but uh i figure yeah i <laughs> i might decide to do that at some point if i don't know if, if the world ends and i can't get a dryer or something like that but i i think i'm just going to start looking for like a nice used dryer um this one's you know like keeping around old antiques and stuff but this one's probably pretty inefficient and whatnot so probably time to start looking for that but in the meantime this will be a nice a pretty elegant temporary solution if i may say so myself uh i'll see you later Daddy, this place is incredible no it's unbelievable <laughs>